Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. I'm Minister Cedric Harden and I'll be presenting Lesson 3 for September the 19th, 2021. We're still in Unit 1 entitled, God's People Offer Praise. And our topic for today, taken from our adult quarterly, is celebrating expectantly. Our devotion reading is taken from the book of James, chapter 5, verses 13 through 18. Our background scripture is taken from the gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. And also the gospel of Luke, chapter 18, uh, verses 35 through 43. And we'll be studying today from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verse uh, 46 through 52. Our key verse reads, What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. That's taken from uh, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verse 51, uh, from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to compare and contrast spiritual and physical blindness. Secondly, to appreciate um, how God is attentive and responds to our needs. And then thirdly, to practice reaching out to those who are marginalized by society. We have just two outlines today that will be a part of our lesson. The first outline is entitled, A Sound and a Shout. And our second outline is entitled, A Word and a Wonder. And as always, we certainly thank and praise God for the privilege and for the opportunity to be able to share God's Word with you through our Sunday School lesson. We always encourage you to get your Bible uh, and be prepared to take some notes. Uh, We want you to really follow along uh, with us. Uh, We want you to be encouraged by the Word of God and we certainly want you to engage us uh, in a way that uh, we will be the better for uh, participating and studying God's Word um, as we ought. Uh, I want to get into um, a bit of this biblical context uh, for this lesson. We have um, quite a bit of ground to cover. I want to just go back and talk about uh, the lesson aims today. The first one uh, talks about comparing and contrasting spiritual uh, and physical blindness. I want to make mention of that because uh, some of the uh, um, scriptures uh, and some of the notes that you might need to, uh, to take will be Uh, relating to spiritual blindness um, as well as physical blindness. We're going to try to lift both of those points today uh, just to highlight uh, um, how relevant it is for us to uh, uh, seek Jesus out whether we have a physical condition or we have a spiritual condition and sometimes both of those conditions are at work Uh, and so we just want to make mention of that and then we want to touch on a little bit of this uh, biblical context and I just want to read uh, some points uh, that that uh, are lifted from our lesson stand but but first the biblical context from our quarterly while the healing story of the blind man is in recorded is recorded in all three gospels only mark identifies bartimaeus uh, by name and i want you to just uh, uh, focus on this man bartimaeus in our text as we talk about him he is our profile uh, uh, individual if you will and we're going to take a hard look at his condition both physically and spiritually uh, and we want to pay close attention to uh, Bartimaeus uh, uh, seizing the opportunity uh, uh, for the crisis in his life. So Luke simply calls him a blind man. You can see that in Luke chapter 18, verse 35 through 43. And Matthew mentions that there was another blind man begging 
uh, with him. That's in Matthew chapter 20, uh, verses 29 through 34. But Luke's version uh, of this healing account recounts that the crowd that had attempted to restrain the blind man actually praised God when Jesus restored his sight. That's in Luke chapter 18, uh, verse 43. People who were once marginalized by society became powerful witnesses for Jesus after a personal encounter with him. I also want to give you Mark chapter 1, verse 45, Mark chapter 5, verse 20, and then the Gospel of John chapter 4, uh, uh, verses 39 through 42. And I just want to stop right there and I want to shift to our lesson standard just to talk a little bit about blindness, physical blindness uh, in the context uh, of this lesson. So uh, in all cases blindness was uh, economically and socially debilitating, right? For example, blind men could not serve as priests. Uh, you can see that in Leviticus chapter 21 verses 16 through 18. Those afflicted with blindness had little opportunity for employment and were reduced to begging or depending on family support to survive. The Jewish law uh, forbade taking advantage of the blind. You can see that in Leviticus chapter 19 uh, 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 verse 14 and also the book of Deuteronomy chapter uh, 27 verse 18 but no amount of legal protection could restore sight. The parable of the Great Supper includes blind people as among those uh, the most unfortunate. You can see that in Luke chapter 14 uh, verse 21 but blindness and sight in a spiritual sense are important themes in the book uh, uh, of Mark. So we're talking about physical blindness uh, and then we want to talk about this spiritual blindness when questioning on the meaning of the sower uh, parable. You can see that in Mark chapter 4 verses 1 through 20. Jesus revealed that there would be people who saw what Jesus did but would not understand the good news he brought. Right? Later, when Jesus was uh, in a boat with the twelve, he chastised them for their failure to understand his person and mission. Having eyes, see ye not? Right? That's in the 8th chapter, uh, verses 18 through 21, right, of Mark. And then, so Mark, the author, left the question open-ended so that his readers might answer it too. In essence, uh, Mark asks, have you read about Jesus this far and still do, don't see who he is or understand the spiritual lessons he is teaching? So you can see the direction that uh, we are taking with this lesson to lift uh, both the spiritual uh, uh, and the physical aspects of being blind, right? Both of them, uh, as we read, are, are, are very challenging positions. Uh, but as we profile Bartimaeus today, I want us to pay attention to uh, 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 his actions, right? His desperation, uh, uh, but just Prior to the first outline, I just want to talk a little bit about miracles because this is one of the things I think that uh, 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 many of us have physical conditions uh, in our bodies, uh, uh, in our families, and we've been praying about those conditions and God has not moved as we would like for him to move on those conditions. And sometimes we are left with the question of why God has not healed. Uh, does it mean that I didn't have enough faith. Does it mean that uh, uh, God is angry? Does it mean that I'm being punished? We have in humanity a lot of questions of, uh, about physical healing, right? But the purpose, let's talk about the purpose 
of Jesus' miracles, right? Uh, as it relates to the Gospels uh, lifting them uh, in, in all of the writings, right, of the Gospels. So the purpose of the servant's miracles was to authenticate the king. That's how Matthew presents him. The servant, uh, that's how Mark presents him. The man, that's how Luke presents Christ. And then, and God, that's how John uh, 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 presents him as the creator, redeemer. God became man. The eternal word became flesh. So Israel's king uh, and the world's savior, right? So Jesus' miracles were outward proofs of his deity and messiahship. You can see that in John chapter 15, verse 24. They also were the expression of his love for uh, an identification with the human race. So uh, uh, he performed for its uh, uh, redemption from suffering, sin, and death. And so we could have a, a, a great discussion about all of the miracles that Jesus performed, but, but, but the, the, the central thing uh, 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 about these miracles was to authenticate who he was uh, uh, and the message that he was bringing to a sinful and a dying world. Even in Mark, I believe chapter 10 verse 45 talks about the servant, Jesus saying that the servant uh, 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 came to seek and to save that which was lost. Uh, it, it does not mean that God is not concerned about the physical conditions that we have in our bodies, but his primary mission on this earth is to save. And so the miracles that he performed in essence were to engender faith in him, uh, causing people to draw to him because he had the capability not only to deal with the physical uh, 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 ills of life, but he also had the capacity to save us. In other words, Jesus was working from the inside out, right? He's working on the heart. And I think it would be a tragedy for, uh, for Christ to save us from our physical conditions, right? And then leave the spiritual aspect of his nature of and his coming undone and so you would have to face God unsaved right unregenerate that would not be a good position uh, uh, to be and so this spiritual blindness has great eternal implications if we don't perceive what Christ has come to do right and so it doesn't uh, uh, matter what we think uh, or how we feel about it, the fact remains that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. And so the very fact that he uh, has saved many of us, uh, uh, some of this we may know about, some of this we may not know about, but it has changed our physical makeup as well, right? So the things that we used to do that were self-destructive Christ saved us from those things uh, and eliminated that destruction, that uh, uh, that path that we were heading down. And so now he brought about new life. So now we are not a detriment to ourselves, but now we are uh, 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 citizens who are, are bringing more of a quality uh, uh, to life. I hope that makes sense. And we certainly will see this uh, 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 as we get through this this lesson today and we're certainly going to back these things up uh, uh, with scripture and hopefully you have taken down those passages that we have given you already so let's move to our first outline entitled a sound and a shout this is taken from the gospel of mark uh, chapter 10 verses 46 through 48 and i want to read this from the niv translation the bible says then they came to jericho as jesus and his disciples uh, uh, and then together with the crowd were leaving the city. A blind man, Bartimaeus, which, mean, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. Verse 47, when he heard, watch this, 
when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, uh, uh, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And then verse 48, uh, many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. So let's, let's just talk about this, right? So if we think about uh, this man, Bartimaeus, and we see the condition that he is in, right? We see the state, uh, uh, and he recognizes uh, uh, that he has an opportunity here to, to, to greet or to meet or to engage or to encounter Jesus one-on-one, -on -one, right? So right now, uh, we know that he has a physical condition. He has a, a, a condition of blindness. We're, we're not told how long he has had this condition, uh, uh, but he's been suffering with uh, uh, this physical condition uh, of blindness, but he hears. He used one of the other faculties that he has uh, uh, he hears about Jesus coming through, right? And he makes a move. He starts uh, 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 shouting for Jesus to have mercy upon him. What does that mean? Right? Bartimaeus is, is seeking pity. He is, he is vulnerable, right? He is, is, is in a state of... I imagine of great agitation. Uh, 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 he cannot see where Jesus is. Uh, he cannot uh, maneuver as someone with sight, but he's using his mouth to call on the name of the Lord. He is, in essence, what we call today. He's 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 engaging in a prayer, right? I would argue uh, that point with you today. Uh, uh, but when he heard. He used his voice and he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me, right? And so when we have conditions in our lives, and I, I think that all of us have at least one condition. It may be a, a physical or it may be a, a spiritual. But Bartimaeus is moving into action right he has he has moved into a place where he's going to do something about his situation and what better uh, 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 avenue to take than to call on the name of the lord and ask the lord to have mercy when we ask god to have mercy uh, 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 upon us we are asking god to pity our situation we are overwhelmed and we are asking the lord to look in on us uh, uh, on our condition but look at verse 48 it says many rebuked him and told him to be quiet but he shouted all the more son of david have mercy on me when i when i thought about this verse and, and as we continue to unpack this man's condition and as we continue to look through the lens of of his infirmity and what he is seeking to do and then we have other people who are trying to uh, 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 rebuke him to reprimand him for shouting out about a condition that he's struggling with. Uh, you know, I was looking at this and I thought about quenching the spirit. I want you to look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, uh, verse 19 at your leisure. Uh, and, and we are told over there not to quench the spirit. And that's what these people are doing. Uh, uh, they are trying to uh, uh, quench this man's spirit in a way that he won't say anything about his condition uh, and, and, and he won't do anything about his condition and this is the, the mistake I believe that that many times uh, 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 we make with God we we don't want to take our case to God for whatever reason we don't want to offend anybody but this man is desperate he doesn't care 
about how loud he is. He doesn't care what people are thinking or saying about him. He is the one that's struggling with this blindness. I imagine that these individuals that were rebuking him, they could see, right? Perhaps they didn't need anything. Perhaps they didn't want anything. But this man wanted to engage Jesus Christ. And I, I just hope that we can learn something from Bartimaeus today that will encourage us to do something about whether it's a physical condition or it's a spiritual condition. You know where you are in your uh, faith. You know if you're weak. You know if you're strong. You know if you are hurting. You know if, if, if you're not feeling well. And so we are encouraged today through the Word of God. And we already shared with you that Jesus is concerned about about our condition but we won't come to him and we won't uh, this is a laborious uh, 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 type of action that this man is encountering that he's engaged in uh, people are telling him to be quiet and he's shouting all the more but I kept on looking at this thing from a spiritual standpoint and let's say uh, for the sake of argument that we have spiritual blindness right and that we won't call on the name of the Lord so as to be saved but I was over in in Psalm uh, uh, 32 and I, you can read all of this at, at your leisure but I want to just go over there very quickly uh, and, and I, I, I thought about this as it relates to what God is offering and 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 we have such a blindness about what what Jesus is offering that we won't come to him uh, in, in terms of our spiritual blindness uh, and we won't uh, 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 ask God to do something about our condition in other words we won't accept the forgiveness when someone is spiritually blind let me share this with you when someone is spiritually blind as we shared with you and they will not come to Christ right even though we are commanded to come to Christ so as to be saved uh, uh, let's look at the posture of someone who is in that position who has not accepted the forgiveness of God who uh, uh, doesn't experience the joy of the forgiveness that Jesus brings but Psalm 23 Psalm 32, I'm sorry, said in verse 3, says, When I kept silent, my bones grew old. Right? Look at this spiritual condition. Through my groaning all the day long, for day and night your hand was heavy upon me. Right? But I kept on looking. It, it says, My vitality was turned into the drought of summer. Right. This is a condition of some someone who who is blind and has not accepted uh, uh, Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. This is a spiritual condition. And on the inside, the psalmist is talking about the bones of that individual that is growing old. He's talking about how this individual who is is just wasting away because God is in opposition to our sinful nature. We should understand that by now, right? And so all of this groaning all the day long was a spiritual uh, uh, aspect of a, of a person who has such spiritual blindness that they won't do uh, uh, what Bartimaeus is doing and calling on the name of the Lord to have mercy. But verse 5, Psalm 32, I'm still there. The Bible says, I acknowledge my sin to you and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, right? And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. So this encounter uh, uh, for someone who is spiritually blind, who has not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you need to see this psalm for yourself and you need to recognize that I'm not asking you the condition that you're in uh, uh, for not having accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Bible is telling me exactly where you are and what is happening to you because you have not called on the name of the Lord. So you have a spiritual condition, uh, but, but Jesus Christ is on standby for you. Uh, uh, when this individual came to, to himself in this psalm and, and, and did what Bartimaeus did and cried 
cried out to the Lord, uh, then we have a different report here that, that he was obviously heard after he confessed. And it, it says, and you forgave the iniquity uh, uh, of my sin. But look, I like verse 6, still in Psalm 32. The Bible says, for this cause, everyone who is godly should pray to you in a time when you may be found. Surely in a flood of great waters, they shall not come near him. Verse 7, you are my hiding place. You, sh you shall preserve me from trouble and you shall surround me with songs of deliverance. I just wanted to give you that and share that with you on the other side of Bartimaeus' condition. He wants joy, right? He wants deliverance. He wants to encounter Jesus Christ about his physical condition. The psalmist is telling us about someone who has a spiritual condition, a spiritual blindness that has not called on the name of the Lord. I also want you to look at uh, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 and, and I, I want to just reemphasize here about quenching the spirit, right? Sometimes we grieve the spirit of God by a uh, uh, unconfessed sin. Did you know that? Sometimes, and so this is what we see in Psalm 32, sometimes we grieve the Spirit of God because we won't let the Lord have his way in our lives and we, we, we think we can handle this, this nature of sin that's out of control. We think we can handle uh, 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 our own mentality. We think we can run the table on, on our heart and the, uh, the seat of our affection and, and we find out that the psalmist is telling us that this situation is out of control until you do what Bartimaeus does and calls on the name of the Lord and ask the Lord this is a very simple prayer, if you will. This is a very simple request, right? Have mercy on me. God pity this situation. God step in because I am overwhelmed, right? But back to this uh, text, this first outline, Jesus and his disciples along with the crowd of followers were traveling to Jerusalem while Jesus made his way uh, to a date with destiny. Many were excited about uh, news of his miracles. Let me just pause here and share with you uh, something that I understand about being saved. It is a miracle. Don't ever, ever discount the miracle that God has performed in your life by saving you. If he doesn't do anything else about any other physical condition, uh, a negative physical condition that you have, he saved you from self-destruction. He saved me from self-destruction. And so we don't need to look at this miracle as it's, if it's something that we may not ever see. We're looking at miracles every single day. When we gather, when we come together with our brothers and sisters in Christ, I want you to do try this sometimes. When you get around your brothers and sisters uh, in Christ that are say, if you can, just start counting how many miracles you are looking at. Some of the stories we know that God has not only saved these individuals uh, 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 spiritually, right, but he has saved them from of uh, uh, physical things, God have healed your body. We, if we, this is why we praise God, right? This is why we meet and we understand that the same God that saved us, and we expect God to continue to do th to keep us, right? To to heal us, and so this is what is happening here. So let's not just dismiss this story with uh, uh, Bartimaeus as some something that has not happened to us, because it has happened to us, and it will continue to happen as God sees fit, not just to save individuals, but also to heal them from their affliction. So large crowds gathered where, wherever he went, hoping to be blessed uh, by a, a Jesus' ministry, right? So as Jesus and his entourage departed from Jericho, about 15 miles northeast of Jerusalem, a roadside beggar spoke up, to gain Jesus' attention. What are we doing to get Jesus' attention? What are you saying to Jesus to get his attention that you need help, right? So the text indicates that the man 
was known as blind Bartimaeus, right? The son of Timaeus, right? Note that he was referred to first by his condition, then by his given name. Isn't that something? They, 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 they wanted to uh, uh, tag him as being blind. And this is something that people still try to do today. They remember when we were good sinners, right? So your first name would be, what, aren't you the sinner that used to uh, be over here? But, but that, that, has, that has been changed. But, but these individuals know this man by his condition, by his infirmity. And so we just need to uh, 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 understand that uh, as Bartimaeus carried on his normal routine, he heard a sound uh, of an approaching crowd and he learned that Jesus of Nazareth was, a, was about to pass by. Knowing that Jesus was near, Bartimaeus lifted up his voice shouting with a, with a hearty cry Jesus son of David have mercy on me I just want to help you to understand if you are not saved today you're going to have to open up your mouth right just like Romans chapter 10 tells us we're going to have to confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead right and and then the bible says and declares that you will be saved but 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 a condition an infirmity right makes us take drastic measures you know and and i, I would just share this with you today if you're struggling with a condition and i don't know how long you've been struggling with that condition but if you have not called on the name of the lord you, i encourage you to do that uh, keep it simple just ask the lord to have mercy on you right take some notes from uh, uh Bartimaeus trying to get Jesus attention uh he knows that Jesus is, is passing by and, and maybe it's not enough time for him uh, uh to put a lot of words together but he simply says have mercy on me isn't that huge have mercy on my condition have mercy on my infirmity i don't care if it's it rather it is inward or outward jesus is the same yesterday right today and forevermore and we need to remember that so in just a few words bartimaeus calls for the master the messiah and mercy right so amid Bartimaeus desperate cries for help those around him firmly told him to shut up right when others tried to silence Bartimaeus shouts for the Savior he responded uh, by calling even louder don't let anybody rob you of this chance of this opportunity uh, I was looking at this question here uh, in the lesson it, 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 it asks how can the church the present day church maintain a worship atmosphere that does not hinder people from worshiping God freely that's a huge question right but I was thinking about uh, 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 the word of God and how it responds to that type of atmosphere and I want you to look at 2nd Corinthians uh, uh, chapter 3 verse 17 uh, and, and, and again, uh, we may not have time to get to all of these things to, today, but I want us to remember from this lesson, if we don't have, uh, uh, we don't take anything else away from it, don't quench the Spirit of God and what He wants to do in your life. And secondly, don't let anyone deter you from encountering Jesus, right? you know what you're struggling with so it it's not my place to tell you that you're that you calling on him uh too loud or that uh you've been calling on him too long and you should be quiet that is not my position right but but i i, I like what second corinthians uh, uh chapter three and we're going to go over there and we're going to look at that uh together because i want us to understand uh, and sometimes, uh, even in the church, since the question is asked, how can the church, right? How can the church maintain a worship atmosphere? And we, we need to not quench the spirit or quench those who are being unctioned 
by the Spirit of God. I hope that makes sense. And I have seen this over the years where we we invite the Holy Spirit in and because of our agenda we chase him off. Right? We quench it. And so and people are struggling in conditions and they are struggling in their lives and it's 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 it's, it's our place, right, to support to support them that they that their encounter uh with Jesus is unhindered right so second corinthians chapter 3 uh verse 17 uh chapter 3 verse 17 we want to go over there uh and it says now the lord is the spirit right and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty right there is liberty where the spirit of god is god is the spirit and where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. But these individuals tried to rob this man, Bartimaeus, of his liberty to call on the name of the Lord up because of his condition, his infirmity that he was carrying. They wanted to take that liberty from him, but he didn't listen to them. He cried even louder. And so we should make sure that we get in touch with Jesus with Jesus uh, uh, by all means necessary about what we are struggling with whether it's a physical or a spiritual condition I hope that I've given you enough to help you to understand these are desperate situations right uh, uh, people are in desperate situations uh, and they need the Savior right I can't save you but Jesus can I can't heal your body but Jesus can. I can't restore your mind, but Jesus can. I can't fix your heart, but Jesus can. These are miracles. Uh, uh, and, and Jesus has the capacity. If we would just call on the name of the Lord, I declare unto you, he will answer prayer. But we get to the second outline and our last outline. It says a word and a wonder. Again, from the NIV translation taken from Mark chapter 10 verses 49 through 52 look at this Jesus stopped and said call him so they called to the blind man cheer up on your feet he is calling you verse 50 throwing his cloak aside he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus verse 51 what do you want me to do for you Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Verse 52. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately, right? Immediately re he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Don't let anyone tell you that Jesus is too busy to address you, right? Jesus, I like this in verse 49, Jesus stopped. He stopped traveling. He stopped moving. Somebody was calling on him. And Jesus was listening. Somebody was screaming out, have mercy. And he knew who it was. And, and he told these individuals to, to call this blind man and, and, uh, uh, and get him over to him. And so he jumped up. This is opportunity, right? This is a chance of a lifetime. This man got what he requested. He wanted Jesus to have mercy upon him. He encountered Jesus, right? And so when he came to Jesus, he, Jesus asked him a question. What do you want me to do for you? right if Jesus were to ask you that today what would you say how would you respond what do you want from Christ why are you calling on him and be specific right tell God tell Christ what you want be prepared to answer that question when you go in prayer should it come up you are to know what you want God to do for you. James chapter 1, right? If you if you read that, 
We should not be wavering and we should not be doubting. We ought to know, right? Because everything is possible, right? Everything. This is your opportunity to go in prayer and to tell God what is on your heart, what is on your mind. This man didn't ask for a million dollars. He didn't ask for a home. He didn't ask for a car. He didn't even ask for a mate. He wanted his eyesight. He wanted his opportunity in life to be able to see. I'm sure he was tired of the darkness. Never ever being able to see anything. Right? Just using his hearing and his mouth and his feel and, and touch and so on. But he could never ever see until he met Jesus. Right? This encounter, uh, even from a scriptural standpoint, it didn't take long because this man's faith was moving the entire event. It was his faith. It was what he believed. He heard about the son of David, right? He used that. He heard about the name of Jesus and he used that, right? And when he got his chance of a lifetime, and I'm sure there were throngs of people all around this, 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 this scene, but this man got his opportunity to ask for something for himself. And do you know what? It was granted. Jesus told him to go. It doesn't say he did anything else, but spoke. this man's faith made him well. You see how important it is to know the word of God, to believe in the word of God, even when God has not moved in, in on your behalf. I'm talking to me now, right? Keep the faith. Keep your face in the word of God. Don't stop praying because today might be that day when Jesus and you encounter Jesus and your request. This is the hope in life. Right? This is what keeps us going. And I know there are things that, that, that you would love for God to do in your life and, and perhaps He has not done those things. But what keeps you going is that it might be your day today. It might be your day while I'm speaking to you that God has decided to give you the victory over that situation to declare unto you that your faith has made you well so we have need as the book of Hebrews I believe chapter 2 and chapter 4 will help us to understand about the importance of perseverance of endurance right we need that perseverance right and so as we think about this lesson today, our profile, the man who we thought couldn't see, and the Bible says he couldn't see physically, but spiritually he could see. Spiritually he was on point. Spiritually his faith was intact. Spiritually his belief system was intact and he used that in spite of his physical infirmity to approach Jesus and Jesus recognized that he had faith in him and so Christ will always respond right believe Hebrews 11 6 he who comes to God must first believe that he is right and that he is a rewarder unto them that diligently seek him. I hope, trust, and pray that we have learned something today about physical blindness, physical infirmities, and spiritual blindness and spiritual infirmities. It is imperative, whatever your condition is, if you are not a believer, and if you are not a, a, a following the word of God if you're not saved my prayer to God is that you would seek him out right don't let another day pass by 
without you calling on the name of the Lord for your situation. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard. Father, we thank you for your word today. And I don't know all of the conditions of those who may be listening me, to me today, but I'm praying just like Bartimaeus that you would have mercy upon us. In the name of Jesus, that you would have mercy upon those who are struggling with physical conditions, especially in this pandemic. And those are family members who are struggling. We have family members who have been struggling with infirmities. But Father, I pray that, that you would give them the perseverance to stay the course and to keep the faith no matter what you do or how you do, that we will remain faithful in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the ears that are listening right now. In the name of Jesus, give us the desire to seek you out. You said in your word that he that th uh, uh, hunger and thirst after righteousness, he shall be filled. We thank you for your word today. Thank you for the miracles that you have performed in our lives that we already know about. And we thank you for what you are doing in our lives. Those things that we cannot see, that we don't understand, that, that we have a, a limited understanding about your will. But help Help us to understand that you love us and that you are concerned about what we're going through. And we pray, God, that you would give us a mind to seek you out as never before. And we cry out as Bartimaeus, have mercy upon us today. We cry out as Bartimaeus today to have mercy upon the conditions of our family members and, and of our loved ones, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We're crying out as Bartimaeus today to have mercy on our cities and states and countries. You know all about the reports in the mighty name of Jesus. We are crying out today as Bartimaeus. Save us in the mighty name of Jesus. You have the power in your hand to save us from whatever uh, is going on in our lives. You have the capacity to perform miracles even right now in the name of Jesus. Give us a spirit to cry out and spare not. Oh God, as we see the day drawing near, we want to be saved and we want to come to the knowledge of the truth. Look on each and every one in authority today, all of the first responders. And we pray for the leadership. We pray for every church door that is open in your name. Every pastor, teacher, leader, in the name of Jesus, we cry out today because we need you and we can't get along without you. We thank you and we call it done. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. God bless you all. Just know that I love you and I'm praying uh, uh, for your situation. I don't need to know what it is, right? I know how to call on the name of the Lord over his people. And my prayer is a very simple one. Have mercy upon us. God bless you. God keep you. Until the Lord says the same, we'll see you next time.